Hey, what's up, Spartan Nation? Welcome to another episode of the Spartan Nation podcast. Here with your host, Matt Lonsberry, and my co-host, Aiden McCrone. Uh, we're about six minutes late here to start time, but we were watching the end of Yale and Auburn there as another upset uh, just took place with Yale knocking off Auburn. Some controversial calls down the uh, the stretch with some, some foul calls and then some non-foul calls, but that's all just part of March and uh, another exciting finish. So uh, it's that time of year, Aiden. Um, I don't know how much you've been able to watch, but I watched quite a bit yesterday and have really enjoyed it. Already got some comments uh, about uh, Oakland knocking off Kentucky. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit uh, today as well, just you know, to give a shout out to Greg Campy and those guys. Um, but a lot of exciting stuff going on right now. Um, I've enjoyed uh, the first day and a half or so here of the uh, tournaments and looking forward to the rest of the weekend. Um, we're going to dig into all of uh, what we saw from Michigan State yesterday against Mississippi State and uh, preview the uh, the matchup with North Carolina tomorrow. Um, but uh, first, Aiden, let's uh, let's talk hockey a little bit just to get the story, yeah. the the ball rolling here a little bit. Don't want to ignore the hockey team who's playing for. Um, well, they already won the regular season uh, Big Ten championship. Now they're playing for the Big Ten tournament title, and it comes in a rivalry matchup against Michigan. So. Um, let's start there, Aiden. We'll talk hockey a little bit, and then we'll dig into some basketball. Your thoughts on the uh, the game tomorrow between the Spartans and the Wolverines? Uh, Michigan State took three out of four from uh, Michigan during the regular season, and a chance to kind of put a cap on the uh, on their Big Ten uh, season here. Yeah, I mean Adam Nightingale has really turned this this program around, and you know they win the Big Ten for the first time ever, and. You know, they, they have an opportunity to win the Big Ten uh, regular season and the the tournament. So that that's obviously huge. And then against against Michigan to to finish it would really put the cherry on top as well. So, I mean, regardless, win or loss, I still think they get uh, an at large bid for the sure. NCAA tournament. But. At the same time, obviously, you want to you want to win that uh, Big Ten tournament as well. So, uh, you know, they they've been they've been pretty hot lately. So, uh, should be should be really good. I know that Mun has really been uh, a hot ticket for the last couple of months. Now that MSU has been good, you know, tickets have been uh, hundreds of dollars just to just to get in there. So. That I mean, that's that's really good. I mean, they've been super hot program uh, lately, and I, from what I've heard from from people who are more plugged into the hockey program than I am, um, that the recruiting is at an all time high as well, and that they are really selling the the program and getting some really highly touted recruits that you know have already been drafted by NHL teams or um, you know have re- affiliations with minor league teams that are that are really high end for sure i've got i've got uh, deer running through the yard over here and my dog is uh, reacting to those a little bit so if you guys hear a howl uh, that would be my uh, my beagle snoopy but um so just be aware of that uh but no like that's um yeah, the recruiting with the hockey, I can imagine, is is really taking off. You know, Adam Nightingale has really knocked this out of the park. What a hire by by Alan Haller, by the way, um, who has kind of strung together some really good hires. Um, we, we, you know, the jury's still out on Jonathan Smith, but that's a hire that we both like. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, Robin uh, Freilich with the women's team, um, off to a great start with her tenure. They lost, you know, in in their tournament yesterday to North Carolina in a, in a close game. Or today was that? That was earlier today. That was yeah. Um, but again. Uh, so a little, little hat tip to Alan Haller with his recent hires, um, really, really good things going. And yeah, like you want to, it would be great for Michigan state to, to cap off this big 10, uh, season with another win over, or Michigan. Like I said earlier, uh, they took three out of four from the Wolverines, um, this season, including the last three, I think the, the first game, um, came out a little, maybe too amped up and, and lost, I think seven to one or something similar to that, uh, got beat pretty soundly. Um, and then really uh, pl- uh, played really well against Michigan in the other three games, um, got that done. Um, and then, again, uh, got that first round by for the, the Big Ten tournament, uh, took care of Ohio State in a close game. So, yeah, the, the, the trajectory of the program is, is pointed almost straight up, it seems like. Um, you mentioned you know, an NCAA tournament bid. I'm sure 
uh, as you mentioned, regardless of the outcome of this of this matchup, uh, they'll be in there. Uh, I think they were ranked uh, number five or number six uh, in the last uh, national rankings that I saw. So, yeah, looking forward to uh, maybe catching some of that. It's it's tough because I want to watch as much of the basketball as I can, but sure, uh, I'll probably have one screen dedicated to uh, uh, the goings on in there in East Lansing with the with the hockey program. So, looking forward to that. Um, any other thoughts on hockey before we kind of dig into the basketball? Or, or I know we didn't t- spend a ton of time on it, but. Uh, um, I mean, not really, but yeah. I, I can touch on the, the women's team as well. I know that they, sure. they had, a, I think it was a two point loss um, to North Carolina, but they, they really had a, a good season and they've really found kind of I, an identity and a direction in the program with Robin Fralick as their head coach. And I think, you know, they're really high scoring offense uh, this year, which, you know, if you paid a, a little bit of attention to MSU women's basketball the past few years has not really been the case, but they, they've done well in the transfer portal as well, uh, just recruiting overall. So I think there there's a really positive direction and, you know, they, they were top four in the Big Ten, uh, which is a really tough league. Uh, and, you know, outside for the sure. SEC is probably the best league in the country for women's basketball. So I think that's uh, that speaks highly on what Freilich has done so far, um, just in, you know, the one year that she's been here. Yeah, and a couple more notes on hockey. Uh, you know, Big Ten, the All Big Ten uh, awards came out last week. Um, and, and Michigan State had several people who were rec- recognized for for what they've done. Uh, defensemen, I might butcher some of these names, so bear with me. But uh, Artem uh, Levshinov is that is Levshinov? That's what it looks like. He won Defensive Player of the Year and uh, Freshman of the Year. Was an All Big Ten first teamer. Uh, obviously, All Freshman team as well. Uh, Trey Trey Augustine, the goalie, has had an excellent season. He was second team All Big Ten. And was had a spot on the all freshman team. Uh, Adam Nightingale was the unanimous uh, Big Ten Coach of the Year, um, which is well deserved. Obviously, taking over a team that I think before he got there had not had a winning season in six or seven years. They go uh, 500, I think, in Big Ten play a year ago, and then they win the thing this year. So um, again, the arrows pointed up, and uh, looking forward to seeing how uh, those guys perform tomorrow. Uh, Carson. Uh, Dorwart, Isaac Howard, and Joey Larson all got uh, honorable, mention, honorable mention, all Big Ten as well, a, th- a, pair, a, a trio of sophomores. That was the thing that I noticed, too, as I looked through the roster and, and some of these contributors for Michigan State. A lot, this roster is pretty young. Uh, this seems mm-hmm. like these, these guys are going to be around for a while. Um, I know in hockey, uh, I believe you can kind of – you can go – at any time or you can get drafted at any time at least um and so you know there's there's a little bit of that uh but for the most part it seems like these guys stick around and and this is a very young roster and one that it looks like it's going to be very competitive uh and then in next year and going forward as well you mentioned the recruiting so yeah great things from the hockey looking forward to um maybe catching some of that game tomorrow uh with that uh, let's let's turn our attention now to men's basketball and talk about what we saw from the Spartans yesterday on the court and maybe what we expect to see tomorrow. Um, I'll just start with this. I think uh, I was very impressed by what I saw from Michigan State yesterday. They looked very dialed in, ready to go. Um, mm-hmm. It was kind of a, a throwback march uh, performance for for a Tom Izzo coach team. Um, and for my money, I think that was the second best performance from Michigan State all year, bested only by that that uh, game against Baylor where they just blew the doors off of Baylor in Detroit. Um, I think this was the second best game they've played all season long and very impressed. They played Purdue very well both times. Um, but as far as like getting a win and, and looking impressive doing it, I was I was very impressed by what I saw from from Michigan State. Other than the turnovers, the which hasn't mm-hmm. really been a problem this year, which is ironic yeah. because that's that's been kind of a staple of of Izzo's tenure is you know, some turnover issues. Um, they had those yesterday, and yet they did such a good job um, on the defensive glass for the most part. I think Mississippi State got some mm-hmm. some offensive rebounds late, but by that time, you know, the game was pretty well in hand. Um, so I was very impressed by what I saw. What did, what was the first thing that that kind of jumps out to you uh, looking back at yesterday's game? Yeah, kind of the the notes I have written down are very similar to what you've already said. I, I mean, the first thing was 
you know, they look like an MSU team of old where they do have a lot of turnovers, but they are way more efficient with their offense than they were um, in previous games. And I like the fact that uh, Ty- Tyson Walker was really efficient. I think Aikens, um, you know, he didn't, he didn't, he wasn't super efficient at shooting, but he stayed aggressive. And that's something yeah. they really need from him uh, if they want to go deep into the tournament is just remain aggressive because he can just shy away sometimes and, you know, just be invisible. So I think that that's good uh, on his part. I thought rebounding, like you said, I mean, Sissoko had nine rebounds and, you know, that's, you know, getting nine rebounds off the bench. That's, that's huge. Uh, And, you know, something you really need, especially, you know, looking forward to a, a game against North Carolina. So, I, th- I think the the biggest thing for me is that they shut down Tolu Smith because I thought that would be uh, an issue, and they they really handled it pretty well. I thought uh, Matthews, I thought Carr and Hall had some issues early on with Matthews, but uh, you know defense tightened up when they when they needed to, and I thought that was that was really good. And you know they didn't have. Uh, they had very little bench points, which is something that has been an issue for MSU this season as well. So I just thought overall, yeah, outside of the turnovers, this was a very um, MSU team of old, which is something that I think we've been longing for for the past, you know, two or three years is, you know, a team that's going to grind it out. And, you know, they, you know, they won by what was it, 18 or 17. So 18, yeah. Um, so I think that that's something that, you know, we, we've expected out of them, uh, but really haven't seen. So, yeah, I thought overall this was probably um, their most well-rounded game of the season outside of Baylor. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Um, to your point about Sissoko, he was he was a guy who was like borderline unplayable for, for a stretch mm-hmm. uh, down, the, down the stretch um, this season and last several games. But – it not back to back games now against Purdue and in this one has been very like this is what uh this is what Matty Sissoko needs to be a guy who comes off the bench and just plays hard defends his tail off and, and grabs as many boards as he can in however many minutes that he gets and that's what Michigan State needs him to be he's never going to be a a 14 and, tw- and 12 type of guy like he's not going to bring you that out mm-hmm. offensively but this is what Michigan State needs him to be um and that's what he's been these last two games if that continues um he can be part of the rotation as as we go forward uh cooper's wearing the mask now that's gotten some comments uh with that after getting popped uh, against uh purdue he um he wasn't bad uh as far as like he didn't produce a whole lot uh, as far as numbers but i thought he performed uh, pretty well as far as just the minutes that he was able to give uh, but what you got at sissoko um was was a big lift at the five spot uh Booker two two for six, uh, one for four from from three. Not great numbers, but like I still like I, I like the the idea of of giving him those shot opportunities. Uh, he only played eleven minutes, but um, like what I saw in, in that short stint for him. Um, but yeah, the guards was really that was the story of of the game. And it's, 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 we're, speaking of Aikens, like he's six of fourteen from the field. You'll take that. That's you know it's in the forties. Um, three of eight would have liked to see him knock down one or two more of those, but just the fact that he took those with confidence and, and very little, little hesitation from, from Jaden yesterday. And that's, that's what we're looking for. That's what, uh, Michigan state needs out of him as well. Mm-hmm. To your point, got to the rim a little bit more, uh, in, in this game, the, the, the two handed dunk that he threw down, uh, over a guy, he just played with more confidence, played with more, uh, like he belonged. And you can tell that the the message that he's gotten from Izzo over these last several weeks about just having that that back, having his back and things like that has made an impact yesterday. Now, I will say that's one game we've got to see that continue uh, into mm-hmm. tomorrow's game. Uh, it can't just be a one off for, for Jaden. He's got to continue right. to uh, play with that confidence. The other thing that I like, and maybe the fact that he saw some shots go down early helped with this fact, but he was, he was active in other areas as well with the seven rebounds, um, handed out a couple of assists or he didn't have any assists, but uh, a block and a steal. Um, I thought he played very well defensively for, for Michigan state. 
And then you mentioned Tyson. Tyson looked like his vintage self, you know, pre-injury. Mm-hmm. Maybe this, maybe a few days off here between uh, the end of the Big Ten tournament and and yesterday. Maybe that helped, and he's feeling a little better. Or maybe we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, that. That's something to keep an eye on as we kind of go in, go into you know second game in three days type of thing uh, going into tomorrow. But 19 points, uh, seven to 12, very efficient, three of six from outside. Um, that was another thing that that jumped out to me was just Michigan State's willingness to to put up a lot of three pointers. Um, that's something that's kind of been a source of frustration for the fan base because Michigan State shoots them at a pretty good clip, and yet they don't. Uh, they're one of the lowest in the country as far as the number of attempts. Um, and then it's it's ironic because you go against a Mississippi State team that who defends the three very well, and yet they weren't afraid to 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 launch them against uh, the Bulldogs and they had a lot of success there. What was your thought on Michigan State's offensive strategy and, and willingness to take those deep shots? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you know, they, I think they took chances. I think they they played their their matchups. Um, obviously, down low, they didn't. You know, Sissoko Cooper didn't really get didn't score a lot, and they they knew that. And I think it came down to depth because uh, you know. From watching Mississippi State, the you know earlier in the season, they have you know a couple of good guards, but I think you know MSU finally utilized the fact that they do have three guards that have the potential to be you know all conference players. You know when you have Hogard that can you know hit a three in the corner from time to time. When you have you know Tyson Walker when he's at his best. When you have Jaden Akins who is playing aggressive, I think that shows, you know, you can take those chances against, you know, a pretty good defensive team. So I think, you know, I think that's really important. You know, they're, they're going to have to take chances against North Carolina as well. Um, For sure. and, and we'll talk about that. But I, I think, um, you know, a player we haven't mentioned yet was Trey Holloman, who I yeah. thought had a really good game coming off the bench too. And, you know, he, he, I don't know how many threes he had, but I know he had a few, uh, you know, long twos where it was just kind of like the the Josh Langford take one step inside the the three point line and just knock it down. So I thought he, you know, he played really well too. I thought, you know, yeah, like you said, they're they're efficient shooting team. It's just um, getting them to to play with confidence. So. Uh, they did that, and you know, again, we've seen this before, but it comes to it also comes down to can they do it on the back end defensively, and then you know, the consistency. Can they do that, you know, tomorrow as well, um, and kind of stack it, you know, on top, stack games on top of each other, and just ride with that momentum. Yeah, for sure. It seemed like there were fewer possessions that ended in. Oh, the first first or second look wasn't there, and so the ball just kind of ends up in Tyson's hands, and he dribbles around for a couple seconds, and then you know tries to force. Like there weren't too many of those possessions uh, yesterday. There was a stretch. Uh, Michigan State built like a uh, a nine or ten point lead. I think it was a ten point lead, and then uh, Mississippi State reeled off like seven in a row. Something about a, you know the, the lineup there wasn't great. Um, I think Tyson was on the bench during that stretch. Uh, but other than that, it was it was pretty pretty fluid offensively for Michigan State. Defensively, I was very impressed because we've seen um, this season we've seen stretches where you know Michigan State really dials in defensively, but it's like a, a five or six minute stretch, and then it kind of mm-hmm. that, that intensity starts to wear off, and that's a natural thing. Um, it's hard to play hard for 40 minutes. But I was very impressed with just the way Michigan State played the passing lanes throughout the day uh, against Mississippi State. They made it really difficult for the Bulldogs to really get into any kind of rhythm uh, offensively. Um, you know, Mississippi State shot just 37% from the floor, uh, 22% from outside. So it, they made things really difficult. Um, and that was a full team effort for for Michigan State as well. You know, the bigs did their job against a tough physical uh, front court for uh, Mississippi State. I didn't think it was a great matchup for for Malik Hall, and I think that was reflected a little bit in his numbers. Uh, he mm-hmm. had ten points, but uh, didn't make much of an impact on on the glass. Uh, fortunately, you know Sissoko kind of uh, carried a big load there. Aikens helped out, um, so I'm I'm a little curious to see what uh, maybe how Malik plays uh, tomorrow against North Carolina. Another an, a tough team um, in the front court. You know Babcock, uh, he's he's more of a five, but 
uh, he won't be matched up with Hall. So I'm just interested to see how Hall kind of uh, builds off of the t- yesterday's performance, and maybe if he if they get more out of if Michigan State gets more out of him tomorrow. Um, but yeah, d- defensively was really impressed with uh, the way things uh, the way the Michigan State played and, and made things difficult. Uh, there was a stretch there towards the end of the first half where uh, Mississippi State's little guard uh, Hubbard is, is the is the little guard. He 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 got hot there for a while um, and, and made a run before Malik's uh, floater there at the end of the half. But other than that, I thought they defended the perimeter really well. Uh, your thoughts on the Spartans' defensive effort? Yeah, I thought I thought it was really well, and like you said, I thought um, you know they're getting the hands in the passing lanes. I know Tyson had a few steals that were, uh, you know, were key in transition because that that that's how MSU wants to play. They want to play fast in transition. They got those guys to do that. Um, you know, early early on, we saw Booker get in, uh, get a couple minutes early, and you know, get a bucket in transition off one of those steals as well. So. I think, you know, and once once they they, you know, are aggressive on defense, they can get, you know, the the younger guys, you know, Cohen Carr, you know, Xavier Booker. And then you can also get, you know, Malik Hall involved in that as well. So I think that that's a huge key for their offense, um, you know, heading into next game. And I think, uh, you know, UNC has been turnover prone um, and they, you know, They've had kind of a, you know, they they lost to NC State in the ACC championship. I think they've had a couple, um, you know, close games with with some teams they didn't really have any business being close with. So I think you know MSU's been there with, you know, Purdue. They've hung in there with Illinois, and you know that was a three point loss when they were on the road. And you know this is going to be a road game because they're in Charlotte. Um, so it's it's basically a home game for UNC. So, you know, right. they, they've been battle tested on the road. And I think, you know, MSU, if there is a team prepared to to make that, uh, you know, to 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 beat UNC in, in Charlotte, I think it's MSU just based off of experience. But at the same time, um, you know, this team is is a is a wild card, you know, all yeah. over. So you never know what what you're gonna get on any given night. For sure, no, I um we didn't we didn't have a show between the end of the Big Ten tournament and uh, like Selection Sunday. We we weren't mm-hmm. able to to come on here and talk about the matchup, but it, it was a tough draw to draw North Carolina, um, in, in Charlotte. As far as like the the other one seeds, um, I don't think Michigan State probably you didn't want no part of UConn for sure. Um, mm-hmm. You probably didn't want any part of Houston. Um, you can make a debate between Purdue and North Carolina, um, but Michigan State has really struggled against Purdue. Maybe if you get some non-Big Ten officials, that would be interesting to yeah. see how that would kind of play out. And that's all I'll say about that. Uh, based, on, we didn't talk about the the Big Ten tournament game either, but some uh, some questionable officiating in the Big Ten tournament, to uh, mm-hmm. to say the least. But we won't we won't go back that far. So you can make my, my my point is you can make the debate you know which one C would you prefer to play? Um, I think North Carolina was a was a decent draw from that standpoint, but the fact that you're playing them in Charlotte makes it difficult for sure. Um, Armando Babcott he he concerns me a little bit just because we've seen um, we've seen prolific big men give Michigan State issues over the last several years, and that just goes back to mm. um, the Spartans kind of deficiencies in the front court. Uh, I do think those guys are playing better of late. Going against Zach Eady certainly prepares you for another tough matchup. Yeah. Now, now Babcott is a little bit more, uh, certainly more athletic. Um, you could argue more skilled than Eady, uh, but he's also not the just albatross that that Zach Eady is either. So, like, there's um, it's an interesting comparison there. But you you you've faced you faced good big men in the past. We'll see how they can. Uh, adjust to that, and that'll be, I think, the key number. Key number one was is 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 him, and then looking at the perimeter, you've got R.J. Davis, who I think was the ACC Player of the Year or was mm-hmm. the first teamer in the ACC. Yeah. So uh, another tough matchup. Uh, so talk about those matchups a little bit, Aiden. What do you see, or how do you think Michigan State will approach defending Babcock and then uh, Davis as well? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Baycott has, you know, he averages a double-double. Um, 
And, you know, RJ Davis averages over 20 points per game. So just between those two, that's, you know, 35, 40 points a night. So, um, you know, that's, that's a huge part of their offense. I think the way that MSU should approach it, um, you know, kind of like you mentioned is how you approach Purdue and uh, going against Zach Eady is, you know, you have those offensive threats, you know, that they're going to score and, and it's not a, it's not a matter of stopping them. It's a matter of how much are you going to slow them down? So I think, you know, slowing down Baycott and Davis are huge, but also taking away their other role players and key players. Um, you know, Kiddo is a really good shooter. Um, Ingram is going to, you know, be the four who's going to match up against Hall and Carr, who's really athletic. Um, you also have Cormac Ryan, who is another good shooter. So, yeah, I mean, they, they have guys everywhere. It is it is very similar to Purdue. I think the one thing that I would give North Carolina the advantage of would be um, how well R.J. Davis has played this year. Sure. And uh, I think, you know, I think he's, uh, you know, if it wasn't for Zach Eady and Dalton Connect, he's, you know, probably the next guy for National Player of the Year and uh, in, in the way he's stepped up this season. So I think... Uh, winning the rebounding battle, that's, I mean, that's obviously huge. And the way that they, the way MSU rebounded last game, I think, you know, there's a good chance, you know, Baycott's still going to get a lot, a lot of rebounds. Ingram's athletic enough. So, you know, that's going to require Hall. Um, that's going to require Aikens to get some rebounds. That's going to require, you know, Cohen Carr to come off the bench and, and get some rebounds. So I think, you know, those, those are all huge and, you know, they don't, they don't really run that deep uh, for, for, you know, historical North Carolina teams. They, sure. they are not, they, they don't have a ton of depth. And I think that plays to MSU's advantage um, because if you can get, you know, the, the role players to not, um, you know, to struggle and, and be slow and, and get some stops, I think, you know, they don't have a guy to come off the bench and really give them a spark. They really run uh, six or seven deep. So I think those are those are really the the key components. Um, and yeah, I think that's really that's really the biggest thing and and winning the rebounding battle and, and keep going in transition, because I do think yeah. uh, this North Carolina team, they do like to play fast. But again, if you if you lack depth, uh, they're going to they're going to wear out, I think. You know, Trey Holloman's got to got to come up big off the bench uh, sure. and, and give some really quality minutes. Yeah, I think we saw that a little bit yesterday with with Kansas and Sanford. You know, Kansas got mm -hmm. off to a very good start. Um, that was kind of a popular upset pick. I I fell kind of into that trap too. And then yeah. they're down. Sanford's down by twenty two. I was like, man, that was just too obvious of an upset. But then as the game went on, um, Kansas is so limited in their rotation right now with with uh, Kevin uh mcculler not being available that i think that wore them down as as the game went on and then you know samford goes on this run uh a bogus a total bogus uh block call or a, a foul call on the block i don't know if you saw that yeah yeah day. i, I did but terrible call it was awful um and at that point i was definitely pulling for samford so unfortunate there but um just going back to your point about north carolina maybe a lack of depth um you know, I, I, thinking back to like some Roy Williams, North Carolina teams, they did like to get up and down and play that fast pace. And so mm -hmm. um, it's not it's it's not contrasting styles because Michigan State wants to play with play that way a little bit. It's an interesting dynamic because you want to run uh, offensively yourselves, but then you've got to be conscious of of shutting down the opposing team's fast break. And so that'll be an interesting battle to watch uh, tomorrow for sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um as always, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop those in the comment section. I see, uh, Steve, I see your questions here. We're going to get to those. Um, but yeah, just that's that's something that I'll be keeping a while, uh, an eye on tomorrow is is uh, who is winning that fast break and transition battle, who's doing a better job uh, of getting out and going, but also getting back and shutting down the run game of the other, other team. Um, Steve mentioned the inconsistencies. Uh, throughout the season and kind of knows uh, what we're seeing as far as changing behavior or, or pattern. Uh, it's tough because this has been what's made covering this team all the season so difficult. Yeah. You just don't know what you're going to get. Uh, there was multiple times when you go back, go back and watch our previous shows where 
Uh, they lose a couple games in the row. Uh, and so we come on here and we're super down on them and talking about how all these different things are wrong. And then they reel off a few wins in a row. And then we come back and say, hey, maybe they, maybe they figured it out. Uh, they had that stretch in Big Ten play where they won like uh, eight of ten games or something like that. Um, or maybe maybe more than that. And then they come and lose uh, three out of or four out of five down the stretch of the regular season. So it's been an up and down roller coaster all season. Um, so that's kind of how I approached, you know, as I filled out my bracket, not that that's important, but like that's how I approached uh, uh, this team a little bit, just doing that because I, I picked them to beat Mississippi State because – Izzo typically has his teams ready to go in, in the big dance and Michigan state usually gets out of the first round. Like that's, that's typically mm, something that yeah. happens. And so I expected a good performance and we got one. I think, like I said, I think that was the second best performance we've seen out of this team all season. Um, now can you on one day prep uh, put together another similar performance? Cause it will take another performance of that caliber. I think in order to knock off Carolina, Carolina is a better team than Mississippi state. Um, you're going to have to play that well, and it, it'll, it'll probably still be close. Um, but I think if they do play like they did yesterday, they'll be right there. I think the spread last I checked was like three and a half. Um, and so Vegas is expecting kind of a dog fight. Um, and I do believe Michigan State can pull off this upset if it plays like it did yesterday. Now, I think one player, Akins cannot have like one of those two for nine uh, G yeah. nights, like, or, or one of those that we've seen at times throughout the year. Like that's that's a problem. Um, you need him to be similar to what he was yesterday as far as shooting numbers. If he goes three of eight again, I think that's okay. Uh, if he if he goes six for fourteen from the from the field, I think that's okay. Uh, Tyson's got to do what Tyson's done most of the year. The person I think who really has to elevate and play better is AJ Hogart. Um, he was okay against Mississippi State. He had eight points, uh, handed out eight assists, which was impressive, but five turnovers. That he can't turn the ball over that frequently against Carolina. To your point with the with the fast break, that's just going to lead to too many easy buckets for the Tar Heels, and so he's got to take care better care of the ball. Um, and so Hogard would be like number one on my list as far as who needs to to really step up and play better. And then we need to see the Malik call that we saw for the majority of the uh, the stretch down the regular season, where he was a 15 and seven type of guy. Um, I think Michigan State needs that out of him. He has he had five turnovers uh yesterday too so like those two guys got to take better care of the ball play a little better and then you got to get a tyson walker performance out of tyson walker and then akins just can't have one of those just not show up uh shooting nights and so that's kind of the recipe uh any thoughts on that aiden as we uh, look forward to tomorrow yeah well i i actually pulled up uh last year's game against marquette where you know where msu won in their their second round game and you look at the stats, Tyson Walker had 23 points. A.J. Hogard had 13. Um, Malik Hall, or sorry, uh, Joey Hauser and Matty Sissoko combined for 20 rebounds. Malik Hall came off the bench, uh, gave five rebounds as well. So I think, you know, that that's another team where it's very, very similar to North Carolina where you have – two good guards and, you know, uh, an inside presence that, um, you know, that can beat you uh, rebounding and can beat you scoring wise as well. So I think, you know, that that's the, you know, beating Marquette last year is a, a very similar blueprint. Uh, obviously you want to, you know, reduce the turnovers. I think 11 turnovers and eight or nine of them were Hogarth and Hall combined yesterday. So, 16, you know, reducing 16 that. as a team yesterday. Yeah. All right. Okay. Sorry. 16 as a team. And I think 11 of them were Hogard and Hall combined. So, you know, cutting down on that, I think is huge and getting, getting guys involved rebounding. I think yeah. from, from what I've seen watching them over, you know, over the course of this year, I think, you know, when Akins wants to rebound, I think he's one of MSU's best rebounders. Uh, just the athleticism, the aggressiveness. So keeping him on the boards, I think he had seven. I think you said he had seven boards yesterday. So Akins had seven. Yep. Yeah. So so keeping up with that, you know, Hall's going to have to be a big inside presence because North Carolina does like to run some sets that you know have two big men and you know Harrison Ingram can play outside and in. 
so that's huge and yeah just just keep keep the momentum going on offense because i think that's where msu has struggled throughout this whole year is the offense goes up and down and the the defense has kind of you know been slow but the defense has started to lock down as of late and really what's you know determined the last seven games for MSU was really how how consistent their offense has been and when you see a game like yesterday where Tyson Walker shooting over 50 percent from the field right. uh, you know they're they're you there's a likely chance that you know they're going to win by double digits but when he struggles and you know he has a game where he goes five for 15 and you know go one for eight from three that that's you know those are the games that you're grinding it out and hoping that you know Molly Call steps up or Hogard steps up to to get you those points that you lose with him. For sure. Um I had a thought and then I, I lost it just now. But anyway, uh no, I think um oh I, I remember it. So against Mississippi State, um Michigan State kind of they 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 landed the first punch early. Uh, absorbed a, a mini blow kind of back and then but they were in control for most of the way uh yesterday and that was just a credit to how well they played um especially on the defensive end of the floor just never giving mississippi state uh much much of a chance to get into rhythm other than the end of the first half there uh when uh when the hubbard kid kind of got going but my, the point i'm making though is like Against North Carolina, you're gonna have to absorb some blows. Like North Carolina's got enough offensive firepower that they're gonna they're gonna be able to punch back a little bit better than than Mississippi State was able to do. And so that's kind of one of those keys. You know, we talked about this team and the inconsistencies. Uh, we've questioned sometimes the the mental toughness of this team a little bit. Uh, that's gonna have to be there tomorrow in order to to knock off uh, Carolina because you're gonna have those stretches where uh, where the Tar Heels will put together. Uh, an eight zero run or something similar to that, and mm -hmm. you've got to be able to um, counter that with with you know, a counter punch. So that's another thing to kind of look forward to. As as good as Michigan State played yesterday, um, especially in the second half, um, I'm interested to see like how they react when when Carolina goes on one of those runs, um, and that'll tell us a lot about this uh, the fortitude of this team and the maturity of this team. And, you know, Steve asked a question about. Um, what makes them, what makes, gives you confidence they can be a championship team. I'm not sure that I am confident about that yeah. right now, but like, that's, that's what we got to see though, is cause you gotta be able to mm -hmm. absorb, uh, the, those body blows and, and have an answer. And so that's kind of what we're waiting to still see from this team. I still like the talent here. We've talked about this most of the year. Um, we like the talent on this roster. Uh, I like the fact that Xavier Booker is becoming more of a, of a factor down the stretch. He only played 11 minutes uh, yesterday, but he was a plus 13 on the plus minus. And so that was second mm -hmm. best in the team. And even looking at his box score, like the box score doesn't jump out at you, but like he just seemed to have a, a, an impact. And those, those were impactful 11 minutes, if that makes sense. Um, if, mm -hmm. if you watch the game. Um, and so like, that's, that's what you got to have is you got to have some role players who uh, maybe play a little above their role. Um, that's what I'm looking forward to see some of that fortitude. Is there any other of those type of specific things that you're looking for, Aiden? And then we'll get out of here. Um, no, I mean you you pretty much touched on all of them. I think, you know, Trey Hallman, I think that's the I think that's a big uh piece for tomorrow in, in okay. beating North Carolina. But I think tournament wise, you know, what what gives you confidence to make them a championship team, I think. Um, you know, from what we've already seen, I mean, this this is a crazy uh, tournament already with right. some crazy upsets. So I think getting past North Carolina definitely gives um, you a lot of confidence that, you know, you get you get through the first weekend. You have time to rest. You have time, you know, because there have been these nagging ongoing injuries throughout the season from you know, various amounts of players from right. um, Hogard to Hall with, you know, with Cooper now. So, you That's know, figuring that out that, you know, yeah. So getting that rest time after, after you beat, you know, the top team in your region is huge. And, um, you know, maybe there's an upset tonight that leads to, 
you know, Grand Canyon in the Sweet 16 or something like that, you know, so that so it's kind of just playing it out. Obviously, you know, you got to play the team in front of you. And, you know, North Carolina is, you know, the best. I think, you know, I don't know if I would say they're better than Arizona, but I like know, Arizona. Obviously, yeah, yeah they're uh, they're a really good team. And, you know, you, you got you got to beat the best. And Izzo has been known to do that. I think this reminds me a lot of you know, the 2015 final four team uh, that, you know, was a seven seed that played Virginia in the second round that a lot of people thought, you know, Virginia was primed, um, ready to go to a final four. And, you know, MSU came out strong. They came out swinging, which uh, they struggled to do the whole season. Um, And then they started strong and they, they didn't let up. And, you know, once you, once you, you know, beat them, then, everything else unfolds and you have a, a nice clear path to the final four there. So yeah, right. I think, yeah, I think that, that everything else will take care of them, care of itself. I think, um, I think another thing is this North Carolina game, especially gives you, you know, every chance to prove everything wrong about this season, sure. um, you know, better rebounding team, uh, better offensive team, you know, you have you high powered guard, all American front court. So it gives you every reason. And MSU's historically struggled against North Carolina. So again, another chance to to prove everyone wrong. And I think that's how Izzo likes it. I think me yeah. personally, um, I'm not a huge fan of it just because um the, you'd, you'd the, rather be the favorite team for sure. Right, right. So um, and after you know what they what they've done throughout the season, it's kind of hard to trust them. Um, sure. in a sense. Yeah. So, so yeah, but yeah, I think that they, they seem to play with confidence yesterday. So hopefully they come out with a lot of confidence tomorrow. No, for sure. I think he, uh, that's a great way to kind of wrap things up tonight. We're going to, it's a shorter show tonight just because, uh, we're going to come back. The plan is to come back tomorrow and go live after the game as well. Um, so, um, we're going to, we're going to sh- cut things short a little bit here tonight. Um, we did just get a question from junior, uh he asks uh here i'll pull it up how far does msu need to go in the tournament in order for izzo's naysayer haters like valeni uh to get off the soul box and and replacing izzo i don't think you're gonna shut valeni up and, unless michigan state wins the national championship so like that's you know that's kind of a uh <laughs> you know when you cite valeni like you've got to do again i think it's national championship at least final four probably and um i don't listen to a ton of mike Valenti. i do find him uh, entertaining at times. I don't know how uh, much stock I put into his sports opinions, but like he is an entertaining figure. That's, that's the reason why he's been around as long as he is. Um, but as far as like the more uh, average is naysayer, let's just call it that. Um, I think if you get to the final four, that kind of uh, ends a lot of that talk. It, well, I don't ends is not the right word. It, it, it pushes it back at least until, you know, they go on a three game losing streak sometime next year. Oh, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, Valenny, I don't think you're ever going to uh, get him off his soapbox. Um, I will say, though, that, you know, Izzo built this team around this whole, you know, there, there was that that stretch where uh, every every four year guy went to the final four at least once. That was kind mm-hmm. of like what this uh, program uh, was known for is like you're gonna go on a run at least once every four years. It's it's been some time now. Um, this is that kind of uh, the fourth tournament after COVID, um, I believe. Uh, so mm-hmm. and and you know then there's been there's been a a, a decent drop off from the end of the you know Cassius Winston and, and Xavier Tillman their senior year where they didn't unfortunately they weren't able to play in a in a in a tournament. Um, Michigan State has not gotten back to that level. So. Uh, you, you do it this year, even even with all the struggles and, and and not living up to expectations. If you if you put it all together in March and, and go on that run, um, I think a lot of the uh, a lot of that narrative gets gets tossed out the window. You and I talked about this, Aiden, before they played James Madison in, in the opener. Mm-hmm. We talked about expectations for this team and, and we we had high expectations, but we even talked about it then. It's hard to win in March. It's hard to get to the final four. It's hard to win a national championship. Um, And so we did not, 
we did not place a national championship or bust uh, expectations on this team. We did think they should compete for a final four. Right. Um, and after the season that they had, they made it more difficult for themselves to get there. Cause now you've got to go through mm-hmm. a one seed and you're going to have to go through a two seed, uh, maybe in, in Arizona. Who's the three seed in their region. I got it right here. Baylor. Baylor. So maybe a rematch yeah. with Baylor, and, you know, <laughs> so th- like you, you've put yourself in a tough spot. Um, but if you're able to, to still end up in, uh, in the final four, I think that that shuts down a lot of that talk. Um, so that's, uh, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Uh, and with that, we will kind of wrap things up again. We're going to come back tomorrow after the game and kind of mm-hmm. react instantly to that. So look forward to seeing you guys then. Um, and thanks for always for thanks as always for joining us and uh, we'll see you next time.